Welcome to Valley Spotlight and happy Sunday, everybody. We are in downtown Warren That's at true. Weston, Maine. Yeah. With our boys. What, what do you think about this, Michael? Nate, uh, Gabe and Nate on the other side. They've. Uh, you guys have been around for how long? How long has this place been open? A little bit over a year. Yeah. yeah September. Have you had you worked in restaurants before? Or give me the background a little bit. How you guys came together and decided to open this one? I up. know a little bit. You guys are super talented. We'll have like <laughs> yeah, they're real chefs. You guys, we're actual chefs. Well, we're both we're both uh, trained chefs. We actually went through the same program, Le Cordon Bleu. But he was in Arizona. I was in Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, we've known each other for years. My our, my wife has known him I've, since they were like uh, 14, 14 years, years old, old, actually. Yeah. 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 And uh, wow, we both kind of had our opposite paths and reconnected, and uh, about a year about a year ago, and put this together. I love yeah. it. Yeah, it's, it's been great. It's been, it's a wonderfully warm space, and like your menu, super eclectic. Mike, just a few seconds ago, before we even started the show, you were like, "How do you come up with all this stuff?" Yeah. So, do you guys do you ever butt heads on the menu, or is it always <laughs> yeah, do you? Actually, yeah. some of the best dishes are when you know. When That's we, right. You know, we all right. Argue when we push for what we. These are some want. of the appetizers, right? Yes. That's correct. Gabe, yeah. take us through. Blackened shrimp tacos on the front. Cavita cheese. Uh, striped scallions, red cabbage slaw, onion cilantro mixture, edamame goya, uh, excuse me, edamame, <laughs> go ahead, you got it. Yeah, gyoza. Gyoza. Yeah, it's a pot sticker. Right, thank you That's for making it up, you know, so that I can understand it. What's yeah. the sauce on top? That is a mixture of uh, mirin, soy sauce, sweet soy, and sesame oil. Okay, I very good. That. You know me, I've never seen a pot sticker I don't love. In house hot peppers and oil. You do them yourselves? Yes, fresh herbs, hand cut. Marinated and some awesome olive oil and yep. salt and pepper. And yeah, we like to cook with the seasons. We like to keep it fresh and simple, and you know, just how follow, are, follow the seasons. Right? How are the peppers this year? Hot, mild, a little above? They're kind of mild. Are they? Yeah. Are, yeah, are yeah, you yeah, disappointed? Right. You seem disappointed. A little bit. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, like, towards the end of the year, you know, it gives you a little kick. Well, yeah. We can them at home. I'll throw a jal uh, jalapeno or a habanero in. Like, Not hot enough. Yeah, but for, oh, the, okay. for the masses, we keep them, we keep them mild. <laughs> I think that's for people good. like you. Yeah. I know. I for know. people like you. Yeah. We I'm have to admit, though, like, I, I was looking at the glasses and, like, your emblem on here. You guys are a Steel Light partner. I'm Correct. noticing some of the flatware now that we're, you know, being able to, like, go back out there and see all these beautiful things. So I do want to give some credit where credit is due on how lovely yeah, this stuff they make is, a right? Great product. Yeah, yeah. really. I'm, when I go out to eat, I'm a, I'm a plate. Are you a flat? Me too. And Fred always gets mad at me. All the time. I try to guess before I flip. <laughs> Me too. And, and, uh, and I'm always when right. When it comes to the tableware, it just that help. That it really feel does. In your hand, you know, it, it makes a big difference. It really does. It huh. really does. How's business been? Because it's been nuts, right? It's you know up and down with yeah. everything going on, but right now I think um, we're on a steady incline and things are going pretty well for us. Absolutely. Actually, yeah. you guys yeah. are open six days a week too. Yes. Correct. Only yeah. uh, only off on Mondays. So yep. tomorrow we, they're closed, yeah, but tomorrow. you can uh, make reservations. Right, take a nap. Yeah. Do you yeah. take a nap on Mondays? <laughs> no, I, yeah. got, I have a honey-do list when I get Oh, uh, yeah. So <laughs> much for Sunday it. night football for you guys, yeah. right? Yeah. You have things to do. Um, what other things are we going to see on the menu? Is there oh, anything you're say. super proud of that we're going to see later on that you're really excited about? It's got to be your sea bass. Well, it's the sea bass, but I would say just I'm proud of what we do here, actually. Uh -huh. Like, everything is... As, as a whole itself. I mean, is there a theme or is it kind of all over the place? I see some Southwestern, I, I see some what Asian. What we come together with is elevated American, uh -huh. you know, but uh, that American is influenced by so many different cultures, you know. Um, you know, we've kind of stolen Taco Tuesday as Americans. Uh -huh. So we thought we'd do a couple, we have three tacos on the menu. Uh, we've got some great sandwiches. Our burger is killer. You know, the program we do with our burger, it's this custom blend out of our purveyor it makes for us. Uh -huh. So it's really quality meat, and then you can build it yourself. So you pick the toppings, you have a great bun. Right. So it's all about just great ingredients that we really try to source. This is fantastic. And I can't wait to dig in. This is really, really good. And they're, they're vegetarian and they're extremely healthy. Holy moly. Edamame inside. Yeah. Wow. You know that edamame hummus at V-square yeah. I like? This is like Similar this is like that. this, but better. Right. No, not that it's <laughs> no, no, <laughs> not like that, that, but too, it's really good. good. <laughs> it's really good. All right, hang tight. We'll be at Weston, Maine all day. I want to talk, since we talked about uh, Steel Light a little bit, our perfectly plated this week is Red Plum, which is right down the street. Just a pizza shop. You think to yourself, do we need another pizza shop? In yes. Still have? Turns out we do. Yes, we do. Here's why they're so successful. Oh, 100%. I'm very proud of it. This is like my child to me. <laughs> Alexis Willoughby is only in her early 20s. She doesn't have kids of her own, unless you consider Red Plum. 
this Howland restaurant that just celebrated its one-year anniversary, which for some has been the year that will not end, and for some, the year that flew by. Uh, a little bit of both. Honestly, I can't really believe it's been a year. It kind of feels like longer than a year, yeah. you know what I mean? I Alexis used to work at the sister restaurant, The Chop House, and made the move over here to give her a chance to have a hand in something special. I had input on the actual menu. I helped create the drink menu, which I personally love because that's just something I really, really tend to enjoy doing uh -huh. is being behind the bar and human interaction and everything like that. I just love food and, I don't know, kind of putting stuff together like and making it something or like the same thing with beverages as well. I've always just been very interested in it. I personally wasn't skeptical about it just because I knew the product we were going to put out was going to be phenomenal. Turns out she was right. Just when you thought there's no way we have room for another Italian pizza restaurant in town, they came up with these selections. We have like our New Haven crust, which is actually right over here. Uh -huh. We, it's a little bit thinner, blistered and charred, which you can't find around here. It's kind of like crispy. And then our Detroit crust, which has that caramelized white cheddar crust. It's thick and fluffy. It's not heavy and doesn't weigh you down much. It just has a lot of really good flavor to it. I have a Sicilian alla vodka here. It has tortellini, our sausage in it, and a vodka sauce. Nice. Piece. Does pasta get overshadowed here sometimes? Sometimes, yes, just because I think our pizza is so good and you can't really find it around here, you know what I mean? Still skeptical? Take my word for it. And the response the customers share when they come in to try it. The people are just in awe about it. And honestly, that couldn't mean more to us. You know what I mean? Yeah. The fact that people come in here and they think, wow, we've never had pizza like this or we've never had pasta like this. Just, we're very grateful for that. Sometimes even the best ideas this year got squashed because of the pandemic, but Red Plum has flourished thanks to Alexis, her staff, and her bosses, John and Dimitri. It was a lot of fast paced thinking, you know what I mean? We had to do something fast, obviously with the chop house too. We were kind of just all like, what do we need to do? We need to figure out a plan now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And honestly, I think what we did was the right decision because this place actually ended up succeeding very well through that. And we are very, very grateful that the community reacted the way that they did to us, especially in such a tough time. Everybody was going through a tough time. Yeah. You know, we've never been through that before. Nobody has. So I think what we did was right. So there you go. Eating they have good. a they have a good lunch special. You get a I think you get yeah, you get a slice and a big salad for like five bucks. I added one more slice. Did you? Yeah, you know. <laughs> it's located in that plaza in Howland where the giant eagle is. Three so different been, crusts. Not far from pure yoga or from Yeah. Right we there. love that. I love that whole shop. Barrel center. 33, the whole thing. I could spend the whole day there and then go to yeah. Giant Eagle. I know. Why not? I know. So anyhow, all right, we'll take our first break. Yes, and then on the other side, you remember a year ago when everything mm -hmm. was completely normal? We right. got to watch football and tailgate and mm -hmm. eat chili at a chili bar together? And that's what we did at Mark Canzanetta's <laughs> house. Wait. Yeah, we'll be back with more Valley Spotlight from Weston, Maine in downtown Warden in just a sec. View the best cafe, home of Uncle Nick's Greek Fried Chicken. Sunrise Inn, home of award-winning pizza. Weston, Maine. Come check out our food team. Mocha House Cafe and Eatery, the famous California cheesecake. Charbonnet's Wine on the River, famous for our great wine and our charcuterie. Jack's Steakhouse, famous for our cowboy ribeye. Modern Methods, famous for our craft beer. Cheers to Downtown Warren. Salt Me is a company that produces products that are made out of Himalayan sea salt. I have a love affair with Himalayan sea salt. And as an ear, nose, and throat doctor, the most important thing for me is that the products are gonna be effective and that they're gonna be safe for patients. So I make products that help sinus conditions and I make products that are going to be good for the skin and good for the body. And all of them are made of Himalayan sea salt.
All right, the crowd is in the living room getting ready to watch the game. We're in the back here in the uh, kitchen doing all the dirty work, right? We're doing boys? the dirty work, guys. Oh, yes. Chef Mark, Chef Jeff, we're going to make some chili. Tell people you know, why we picked chili. You know what? Because chili, in my opinion, is so versatile. Uh -huh. You know, you can take chili and we can turn it into five or six different things or 30 different things. Right. You know, so we're going to do this chili today. It's a vegan chili. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, you know, appeal to some of our friends that have vegan dietary needs. And it's going to be gluten free as well. But then we can turn it into, as for meat lovers, and other chili. Okay, awesome. a lot of a lot of tastes out there that we're going to uh, make sure everybody's satisfied. Are you ready right. to do some cooking? Oh, I'm ready to do some cooking. Little brother, you ready to do some cooking? He's ready to go. We're making the chili first, right? We're making the chili first. So okay. we're gonna lay down a little, little olive oil in the pan, nice hot pan, big pot because we're gonna make chili because we want it to last because chili's always better the second day. It's true. So we're gonna lay down some red peppers, some green peppers, and some roasted poblano peppers. Just gonna stir that. Some diced red onion. Right on. So we're going to start, what we're doing with chili is it's building layers of flavors is the biggest thing when you're talking about chili. So we're going to add some cumin, some ground cumin, very earthy in the flavor profile there. We're going to add some chili powder, give it that chili flavor, obviously. Okay. Then we're going to add some ancho chili powder, give it another layer of flavor, that smoked chili from Mexico. All right, we're going to put down some paprika, awesome. a little bit of hot sauce. And Jeff is going to stir that down. Now, with this vegan chili, it's mm -hmm. all about the beans, so because we need a lot of protein. We're going to put black beans, any kind of beans you want. Uh -huh. Butter beans, kidney Pretty beans, good. some white beans or cannellini beans, whatever you like. Oh, we yeah. have to have diced tomatoes, so we're going to add diced tomatoes. Oh, nice. And we're going to add a little bit of tomato puree. Jeff, you want to get a little bit of tomato puree oh, in there? Awesome. I'm going to add the rest of the beans. All right, here, let me ask a survey question. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the hottest, how hot do you like your chili, Jeff? I'm about an eight and a half. Eight. How Whoa, about you, Oh, Jeff's going eight and a half. I'm yes. going five and a half. Okay. And a half. I'm right. going five and a half. How about you, Mike? I'm, a, I'm in the five range, too. Yeah. I mean, I don't mind breaking a sweat a little bit when I eat, but, you know, I don't want to have to towel off. So what we're going to do is we're developing these layers of flavors. We're going to add some salt, some pepper. Okay. We're going to let this simmer down for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. And that's all you really need because you have great ingredients. When you use great ingredients, you don't have to cook them as long. A little cayenne there, guys. There yeah, we're going to go. kick it up with a little oh, bit of cayenne pepper. But going we're going to the eight, isn't it? <laughs> Jeff's going to take us the eight. No, but the I thing about chili eight. is, I, took you to about seven. I like to go to that five because <laughs> then I have all these great hot sauces on my chili bar. You can always add more. They can always kick it up there. Gotcha. All right. So you work on the chili. Mark and I will do a toast to the chili. Yeah, you know, here, guys. We're ready for a big game. Big and game. And we'll come back and show you just how versatile chili can be, as Chef Mark uh, just told us. We have to have the display <laughs> out and people are building some Everybody things. Everybody is going crazy some on this. Some of them more conventional than others. <laughs> uh, tell me what you got on the spread, Mark, before we well, start. Well, first off, you know, with the vegan chili, you know, uh -huh. we have some friends that have some vegan dietary needs. So they can take this and they can take and make a vegan chili over there. Right. And they Come have around a lot here. of vegan cheeses you can do. We have nachos. You can mm -hmm. build your own nachos. Mm -hmm. You know, you have a great brioche uh, bun here for your hot dog. You can do a chili dog. As my brother just went through the line, he's making it in my wife. They made killer baked potatoes. Potatoes. So yeah. we've just done five different dishes with chili and you can do 25 more. So mm -hmm. what I love about having everybody over for game day is being able to spread the love with some chili. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's good stuff. Now, here's but it one. doesn't matter who wins. So over here, you know, you know <laughs> after a while, with the chili, my, now my brother being the pro that he is, uh -huh. he's over here, he's building his baked potato, he's got chili, he crushed up some nacho chips on top of there, he's got a massive amount of jalapenos. Jeff, I think you should do a couple goldfish while you're at it. Just uh, icing <laughs> on the weird cake. A lot of people, there's always the one guy that doesn't use the spoon at the party. <laughs> That's him. That's, so, but this is what tailgating is all about. Everybody, you know, we're getting ready for some big we're games coming up. Here. Yeah. Halloween's coming up, so we have uh, some great holidays, and it's a lot of good time to have family over, friends over, celebrate, and chili is just that super comfortable tailgate food. And it's good all day. Like, it's you good can have a little day. bit before the game, oh God, a little absolutely. bit at halftime. And after. That's right. And if you had a little bit too much drink, maybe around midnight. Uh -huh. Maybe around midnight. There you go. For that so late night up. snack. Is this chili on the menu? At this chili is on the menu at Beaster 1907. We okay. feature the vegan four bean chili. And, you know, we, we televise all the football games from Youngstown State to Ohio State mm -hmm. to any of your favorite pro teams. So we have a good time down there. And you can get some great beers, some great appetizers. The wings are off the chain. And uh, we just have a lot of fun.
Cheers, you guys. Cheers, you guys. Everybody. Bye, right, everybody. Cheers. Good luck to your teams this year. Go Penguins. Thank you, Kansanova. Go Penguins. Cheers. Thank you, Kansanova. <laughs> It is chilly season. It is. It is. And you know, like a lot of people aren't going to bars as much to watch games now. It seems like they're having more people over so they can keep in their space. So We, we can't let Perfect Jeff Canzanetta question. put his hands all over everything again, though. He's just grabbing stuff. I don't mind. My you can come goodness. to my house, Jeff. That's cool. If you want to make something, I'm, I'm okay with it. <laughs> COVID's changed everything. <laughs> all right, you know how some cleaning ladies don't do windows? I, I do. I actually do know that. Not the boss they, ladies. She does everything. And yeah. I cannot wait because our dogs, the nose prints on the glass door, the poor thing, poor Maisie ran into the glass door with her giant nose. Okay. We, we're going to address that right now. Please do. to another edition of Household Hints and Hacks with our boss lady. <laughs> Jamie's here. What color today? It's blue and purple. It's not just blue. It's like an aquamarine it's turquoise blue. It's <laughs> wonderful. It brings out her eyes, doesn't it? All right, enough of that. Let's give you some hints and hacks today. Uh, here, here we go. Now it's starting to get cold. This is kind of like the last chance maybe to get outside and do those windows one more time. Um, we have a door here, same idea, glass door, and there are different kinds of things that are on the doors. Like this one, I don't know if you can see down there, uh, Ken has a lot of puppies, yeah. and they like to uh, pretend like they're going out and they put their feet up on the glass, right? Yeah. So what other things do you see when you when you do these things? Um, sometimes you've got like mold around the edges and different things, um, not necessarily just in doors, but in windows. Right, because of and the condensation. Then the debris like inside the tracks and things like that. Okay. And if you have those windows that tilt in, they're great because you can, you know, if it might be a little bit colder outside, but you're inside and you don't have the second story, go out. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Big fat Greek wedding, they say Windex is the way to go. Is just regular glass cleaner good enough? Yeah, um, that's all we use is just regular glass cleaner. And then I think like the the method is what gets you. Uh huh. And we have a method here. We have a, the yeah, tried method. and true. She uses two towels. Tell them yeah. why. So I always use two towels. Um, the microfiber is a little more scrubby. So if you've got that gunk and you've got those things on there, like you can really scrub it off. Mm -hmm. um, my method is always to use less glass cleaner than you think you're gonna need. Do you spray it on the glass or you spray it on the I top? I spray it on the glass. Okay. And then scrub it up. And then when you're done, um, I actually use just a regular towel to buff it out. One, it gets all the lint and debris that's left, and two, it gets rid of anything that would be streaky. Back in the day, they used to say streaks would go away if you use newspaper, don't use paper towels, things like that. Is that still the case? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We never even tried it. I've never tried it. Yeah. What happens when you do get that a little bit of mold around there or that gunk and stuff? What's a good way to get those out of the windows? Yeah. Maybe not the glass door, but definitely the windows. Yeah, in the windows. So I um, like to use toothbrushes. You can get like a whole pack of them at the Dollar tree for a dollar or okay. four or um, q-tips and you still use the glass cleaner on that does yep. that work yeah you can use that um, also if there's mold you could actually spray a little bit of vinegar in there in the tracks and stuff and mm -hmm. it'll help a lot of cleaning places say they don't do windows. Do you guys do windows? We do windows. Okay. Um, I'm not going to crawl out on your roof, but <laughs> We're if, not going to get on a ladder if for you. If they tip in, I gladly do windows. Okay. Uh, and then once you're good in the fall, then you're kind of good. Yeah, I always like to try to hit them up in the fall because you're definitely not opening them in the winter. Yeah. And then by the time spring comes around, we need them again. Then so. you open it up and get that fresh air in, yes. right? All right. Uh, give them the information. If you want to get a hold of Boss Ladies Cleaning, you can. You can call us at 330 -50 307 3630 or you can find us on Facebook. Yeah, Boss Ladies. Is it Boss Ladies Cleaning on yep. there? All right, very good. And she has locations in like all three counties. Uh, Cortland is one of her uh, clients all the way down to Letonia. So if you want to get in now, this is the way to go because book uh, the spots are starting to book up, aren't oh, yeah. they? Yeah. It's a limited crew, so we want to get out and help you out. All right, there you go. Jamie again, thank you. Thank you. She does windows. Also, <laughs> hands and hacks. Well, there you have it. Mm-hmm. It's nice when they have the the windows that flip down like that, right, that instead of having in. to go outside all the time. But oh. you know, now's the time to do it. If you don't have those kind, and you don't want to go out in the winter, now's the time to do it. I'm, so. Amen. All right, when we come back, we're gonna get dressed up and go on a field trip. I know, and this was one of the stories that we did a couple of years ago that made me laugh so hard. Like just hearing you change outfits was enough, and I couldn't even I see it. I remember laughing my yeah. face off at this one. Separate dressing room, but right next to each other. Right. There was probably some grunting when I had to zip something up. I don't know. All right. Stay with us. You don't want to miss this uh, costume change coming up next.
No hot water? Call A to Z Dependable Services. Our fully stocked rapid response water heater specialist will get you back in hot water in no time. A to Z is the only call you need to make. Welcome back to West End Main here right on Courthouse Square in downtown Warren. And you're almost I'm done. I'm still eating. I know, that's I'm okay. Sorry. That's what commercial breaks are for. I was trying to make room for this unbelievable pork chop. Yeah, we're almost done with the appetizers and we've moved on to the main course here. But anyways, so open seven day, six days a week. So they're open today if you wanted to watch the show and just come on out. Right. It's a good day to do Taking it. Taking the day off tomorrow, but then they'll be back on Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so forth. But okay. Oh, goodness. A couple of years ago, Mike and I had the chance to uh, dress up at Ward's Costume Shop in Niles. I, we had the pick of the whole place. It was so fun. It was fun. so fun and we could take whatever costume we wanted to. So we thought since it's almost Halloween, we'd show it to you one more time. Sound good? I think it's great. All right, here we go. Hi, welcome to Ward's Costume Shop. We're located here in Niles and we've been in Niles over 30 years. The business itself has been in business since uh, for 69 years now. We're going on our 70th, 70th year next year, and we hope you all stop in. And How come and fun! See us. 70 years. Yes. Do you remember when? No, you weren't around when it started, right? Your mom started. Uh, no, I wasn't born yet. Okay. But they started in 49. I was born in 50. So. How about that? Yeah. So you grew up in the costume shop industry. Yes. Well, it was in our basement at home. It was. <laughs> yes. Was yes. that a little creepy? Were you scared? No, I used to sneak down there. We weren't supposed to be down there at Halloween time, but I'd sneak down there. We made dressing rooms in the basement. Best thing was ironing the costumes because at that time we didn't have permanent press, so we had to wash them, hang them out on the lawn, on the dry, the lines to yeah. dry, and then iron them. That's the ultimate game of dress up at your house. Oh yes. <laughs> yes, yes. How was it for a female to start a business back then? You think? It was tough because a lot of people uh, didn't give you the uh, how respect. Do you say? Respect. Yeah. They um, sometimes you would have different men come in the store and they would feel you know that okay I'm Mr. Macho and you know I can tell you what to do. Yeah. No, no. You just had to kind of lay it on the law and this is it. You know. Yeah. But, do you remember any costumes that were big hits throughout the years that oh. even took you by surprise? Scream. Scream, Scream was mask. a big one. Yes, the simple mask. Um, that one, Jason, um, with his hockey mask. Yeah. Um, we've just had so many. You get Austin Powers. Uh, the superheroes are always big. Yeah. Um, Wonder Woman, but she changed. She's changed throughout the years. She started out with her bodysuit. Now she's into pants, but they just keep changing. I think what's neat about this place is it's a place for kids, but it's a place for adults too, and you don't see that very often, right? No. no. We try to keep the store kid-friendly. I don't have a lot of things that scream and holler at you or jump out at you. Right. I want the kids to feel comfortable in here. Um, if they're not comfortable, I try to show them there's friendly things. We have a lot of different animal heads with our mascot type outfits. And that kind of eases them. We've had one one little boy that first time he came in the store he was afraid and then afterwards his dad would say his son would say take me to the monster store <laughs> <laughs> and that's it yep yep the, the accessories too have gotten so ornate and all the cool things you can put with the costume right yes um, a lot of times they tell people if you have something at home or you're gonna put together your own outfit they'll just come in for the little odds and ends it might be a pirate earring it might be the spyglass or the map mm -hmm. the boot covers um, we carry different accessories, we have different sections, we have pirates, we have 50s and 60s, zombies, uh, steampunk, which is fairly new in this area, a lot of people aren't aware of steampunk. Uh -huh. We did the 80s, the western, the Hawaiian. Got it all. So we pretty and much try to. Always a friendly face to help out. Now, Lauren and I need Halloween costumes. Do you mind if we take a look around and pick out a few for ourselves? Nope, that'd be great. Alright, we'll get going. Okay. 
All right, ready to get started. Uh, we uh, Lauren obviously is here, and John, who is uh, kind of like one of the directors on the show, so we got him a director's chair and a cool hat and the clacker thing. I'm ready to go? Are we ready to go? Born ready. All right, let's get started. So, come on, Lauren. A little bit. All right, let's, let's go. Do this. We walk. I know. Super, I'm a very quick pizza. <laughs> Never pizza seen a go. faster pizza than that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if even kids are doing trick or treat this year. Some neighborhoods probably are. Some neighborhoods aren't. But there's always adult costume parties, right? I know. You can log on to the Hot 101 website with our friends from AC and Kelly, oh. and you can check out what all your areas are doing for this year. But we just figured we would. Um, Take a moment down memory lane for a second. That was fun. How was the pork? It's really good. You're going to like that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so uh, Kelly Warren and I started talking about extra spaces in people's homes. You can make a little extra money on the side. Mm -hmm. So here's today's Home Advantage. Hey there, welcome to another edition of Home Advantage. Mike, along with Kelly, and we're in another fabulous property, this time in Howland. Boy, this um, this place has a lot of different rooms, doesn't it? It does, yeah, yeah, very unique property. This has a little bit of a like a third bedroom slash office slash den space over here. I'm a big fan of the flex spaces where you can make it what you want it to be. Uh-huh, and then kind of a family room setting in yes. this room. Mm -hmm. But what's unique about this place, I think, is upstairs. So tell them what's upstairs. Yes. This property has a full separate apartment upstairs with its own entrance, its own bathroom, living room, kitchen, bedroom, mm -hmm. a, a fully separate apartment. And we're not sure if the current owners uh, did that or if it was there when they got there, but there are some advantages to it too, right? Certainly, okay, yeah. Okay, give me some. Yeah, so if your home doesn't have a space like that and you want one, you can always add one, build one, create one. Mm -hmm. So you can build up, you can finish attic space, you can build out, um, whatever it is that you want or need great for that multi-generational family living if you've got college-age kids mm -hmm. if you've got in-laws maybe you have an adult sibling who needs a place to stay whatever mm -hmm. um, great for family to have that extra space boy how many times does the kid come home from college and they don't have their job yet right. or whatever and they but they still want to be by themselves right? yeah i think all of us have moved back into my parents house at one time <laughs> <So> <laughs> i know <laughs> then they moved into a smaller place <laughs> right. and then finally when you're 34 they yeah. kick you out the door so um but you could also use it just to rent out in general and sure. make some extra income off of it. Right. Do you have to, when somebody's looking to get an apartment at your house, in your mind you have to think what kind of lifestyle that person has too, so they don't disturb you and you don't disturb them. Right? Sure. Maybe a little bit different than if you're just renting a place that you don't also live in. Right. Um, is there any formula for the, for the amount of rent that you collect? Yeah, we have a property management division, so we would help our clients figure out how much they should get rent on a place. Mm -hmm. um, they can also look things up on Zillow and places like that and find out what average rents are. Yeah, have you seen upstairs what do you know what they have up there? Some amenities that they might have? Is there? Um, it's it's actually really nice, and we'll show some pictures of it. Yeah, because it's an updated kitchen, it's pretty open and nice airy space. Got the bathroom, so if you're up there, yeah. you're self sufficient. Yeah, right? you're fully self sufficient and separate entrance, so they're not bothering these people at all. And when you're doing that and you're getting rent off of it we call that a house hack so okay. you can essentially live rent free here while you're renting out the other space there you go new term today house
Sports Hack. If you'd like to learn more about that, just talk to Kelly or her team and find out more on how to sell a house or buy one. How do they get a hold of you folks? They can call or text anytime, 330-717-2689 or online at kellysoldit.com. There's Kelly from Home Advantage. All right. Good job, Kelly, as always. And on a personal note, great job, Kelly, for getting me an offer on my house oh. in six hours, and it is officially sold. That's it? I had a, right. a counteroffer. Right, you did. Too late? Too late. We took an above asking offer in six hours. Oh, that's So good. to that team, um, gosh. They're like, good. That's we why knew they were good, and we, she's proven it. Right? More on that to come, I'm okay. sure, in, in later episodes of Valley Spotlight. But how's, right. how, how are the grits? Are they right. Gouda? They're good. It's Gouda. I've never had a grit. My first grit. All right, we're going over. I but know. I wanted to tell you this. But so every time we watch a baseball game, mm -hmm. like literally three times out of the week of five baseball games, my mom will remark, how do the Indians get their clothes so white? How do they get their pants so white? Because Especially when they slide years in second base. cleaning yours and right. your brothers. And Shelly does the same thing. Right. So um, we decided to go to YSU, to the team there that does all the athletes' uniforms and their practice uniforms to see how they did it. And there's a secret to it, too. I can't wait for this one. There you go. All right, in the equipment room at Youngstown State with Tim Gallo, who is the, your official title is? I'm the uh, Olympic sport equipment manager. Okay, so some people do football, some people do basketball. You kind of do a lot of different jobs. Right. But baseball and softball are one of them, Correct. right? Yes. Okay, so I was, I was saying, one of, inevitably my mom will be watching games and they'll say, how do they get the uniforms so white? Especially when you're watching the Cleveland Indians and they wear those white pants. Right. And there's a process to it, right? There's, a, yeah, it could be a long process. It could be a long process. What kind of volume do you guys do? Well, I mean, we just, I mean, we have almost 500 athletes here and we service all of them. Uh -huh. um, I take care of all the Olympic sports and my partner takes care of football. Okay. Um, so he deals with, you know, a little over 100 athletes and then I deal with the rest of them. And they practice every day, they have games and all sorts of things yep. to it, right? Yep. Okay, so there are certain things you can buy at the store, and there are certain things the professionals use to get out the dirt and the stains. Right. Starting with this big jug over here, talk about this. This is not for sale at the local Target, no, right? Okay. No, absolutely not. This comes from our, our chemical company that handles our laundry detergent. Uh -huh. um, laundry facility here. All right, this is called Game Out. Game Out, yeah. What is it? It's a, it's a, it's a chemical, it's a formula that their chemical uh, guy has created. Uh -huh. That this one specifically takes out oil-based stains. Anything with oil, like lipstick, uh, like eye black, uh -huh. uh, anything like that. Okay. And then we have another formula that is for enzymes, uh -huh. which is your dirts and your grasses and, and things like food stains. Right. And you poured the enzyme one into this bottle. Right. Clearly I, marked enzymes. Yes, and this one, it, they call it strong paint. Okay. This is what I use for that. Okay, so if, if a player has a grass stain on it or a mud stain, you use the enzyme-based formula to get it out. Right. Okay. What's the Dawn for? The Dawn is it's just, um, it's a... Uh, something it works. It works. I mean, it's something I tried when, when sometimes when I get to a point where these formulas can't do any more. Uh -huh. I, I try that, and uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but most of the time it does. And show them the tool you use. This, yeah, this is the most important tool I use. You I used have, to use a toothbrush. I use a toothbrush. I have like probably 20 of these. All right, so tell me the process. Somebody comes in with the, the grass stains and the mud. Do you scrub first or do you wash first? Well, what I'll do is I'll wash first because, I, you know, to me, why scrub what you don't have to, which will which will come naturally out of the out of the, the garment through the washer. Okay. Um, so once I wash them, uh, I don't dry them. I take the good ones out that have most stains, I dry them. Um, but I take the ones that still have stains in them and then I begin my process. And depending upon what I think it is, like sometimes like coaches will stick pens in their back pockets. Uh -huh. So I'll have ink stains, so I'll know to use this. And if I have dirt or if I have clay, you know, from when teams go down south and they get clay, mm -hmm. I'll know what to try. Is there a difference between the grass and mud versus the crushed brick and the and the clay? There is. Yeah. Um, the crushed brick seems to really embed itself into the materials, so it's very it's harder to get out. Do you wash in cold water, hot water, or warm water? It's actually warm water. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, you don't want it too hot, but you want it hot enough to where the fabric when you wash the fabric 
opens up and releases the steak. And do you um, you don't throw them in the dryer because it kind of bakes in the. Yeah, it'll bake it in. Yeah, so you'll, not, you'll, you'll never get it out. Bake it in. <laughs> All right. And once it's in there, is can you still try to keep getting it out? Yeah, I mean, I try. I, there's I have pans probably from a year ago that I just keep aside and I keep trying and trying. Two more questions. Do you like it? Uh, I love my job. You do? I do. I mean, everybody has those days, uh -huh. but 99% uh, of the time I love my job. Uh, and it's because of the kids. Yeah. Uh, how tiring is it? I'm, I'm sure you guys work at night a lot of times, right? Yeah, I mean, we have our peak peak times and we have our down times. Huh? I mean, but there are times when, you know, things need to get done fast. And, you know, I have a great group of kids that help me out. And, uh, yeah, I mean, but it is, it's the job. So, yeah, it is what it is. When you see your team out there and they look great. Oh, absolutely. How's that make you feel? Absolutely. Especially baseball and softball because those are my two, my two sports that, you know, get the most stains. Obviously, we play on turf for football, we play on turf for uh, soccer, lacrosse. But so, yeah, when I see those guys and those girls out there and they look good, I'm happy. All right, so parents, listen, you got the white pants, don't shy away. You can get those stains out. Use Dawn, use your toothbrush, and get to work. It's not easy. Well, there you go. Toothbrush, elbow grease is the most important ingredient. And I think. stuff we can't even buy. Yeah, stuff we can't buy. I'm but, a little upset about but that. But the Dawn dishwashing liquid, you can do that. Lo probably loosens up all the stuff in there. Gets, takes grease out of the way. Or whatever they use. Is that that? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways. All right, we'll take a break. Yes, we will. On the other side. Our friend Sean Posey is going to sit down and take us to a, uh, a theater that you've never even heard of. State theater on Federal, right? You are going to learn something today, buddy. I can't wait. You will too, probably. <laughs> right after this. Stick around. Hi, I'm Barbara Corcoran. I'm constantly asked by news sources how to best navigate today's real estate market. I call the brightest agents in the business to get their input. Hi Kelly, what's going on in the Mahoney Valley area? Hi Barbara, the market in the Mahoney Valley has remained strong. I'm so happy to hear that. Sellers are enjoying the safety of the Guaranteed Sold program and buyers and sellers love the 3D tour and the free moving truck. Get the best advice from my friend Kelly Warren. Go to kellysoldit.com. Be safe and smart. And she would always say, honey, I, you snore so loud, I, I can't believe how loud you snore. And I'm like, what? And he claims I quit breathing. I've tried four different masks to make it work, and I just can't do it. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I did off. not know what REM sleep felt like, like before too. the appliance. I really did not. I, it, I never had that deep of a sleep before. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight here on West and Main in downtown Warren. Courthouse Square right across the road. Right, and they are a part of the Downtown 8, a huge campaign of all these local restaurants banding together to make sure that you feel comfortable and that you understand that you at home are needed right. to make sure that they, they can they can make it through the, the COVID-19 pandemic. That's right. And so, they brought out more food, which we're going to talk. We're going to try not to eat all of it before Gabe and um, Nate come back out to talk to explain what it is. I'm trying to get Michael to eat this taco I'll on eat TV. It. I'll eat it. But all first, right. Sean Posey with a retrospective on the State Theater, right, which and was in downtown Youngstown. Something new to look forward to as you head to downtown Youngstown. So take a look at this. Mmm. That's pretty good. That's good. Mm -hmm. I'm standing behind the weathered facade of the old State Theater, one of the few visible remnants of the 70 plus theaters that once existed in Youngstown. This storied site in the downtown actually hosted two Nickelodeons before the state even opened in 1928. At the time of its opening in 1928, the half million dollar State Theater was the second largest theater in the Mahoning Valley. 
It originally opened as a live theater and movie venue. Vaudeville brought in big crowds until the Great Depression descended on the nation and changing tastes put motion pictures back at the forefront. By the 1950s, the 3D movie craze brought both teenagers and families into the darkened State Theater Auditorium to watch the likes of Creature from the Black Lagoon, and it came from outer space. In 1957, the State Theater reopened as a luxury theater, capable of showing Todd A.O. 70mm films. At the time, Youngstown was only one of 35 cities in the U.S. capable of showing such widescreen films. Yet the State Theater declined with the rest of the downtown during the late 1960s, and the theater unceremoniously closed in 1970. The days of motion pictures at the State Theater were over, but it soon became the home of the Tomorrow Club, which hosted some of the biggest rock, punk, and new wave acts in the nation. Groups including Ike and Tina Turner, The Ramones, Pat Benatar, and Lou Reed packed the old theater. In late 1978, the Tomorrow Club closed its doors and was eventually replaced by the 2100-seat Youngstown Agora, which became the largest venue in the Agora chain. Youngstown's Agora remained on the circuit until the summer of 1982. The Star Palace, another nightclub and music venue, emerged in the mid-1980s as the last business to operate in the old State Theater building. Salt and Peppa, DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, and Cool Mo D brought the sounds of R&B and early hip hop to downtown Youngstown. Unfortunately, like the Tomorrow Club and the Agora, the Star Palace also folded after a few years. After languishing for decades, the State Theater finally met with the Wrecking Ball in 2008. After a grassroots effort to save the building failed, the old facade was saved and preserved as one of the last remnants of downtown Youngstown's theater history. Oh, that was cool, wasn't it? I know, it? and now... Now the facade has a wonderful mural. It does. Bob Barco, Everybody. Cityscape, and Leadership Mahoning Valley on top of Strollo Ar Architects, like all really good friends of ours here on this show. Um, they're making this mural possible, and the, just like the perspective of it. It's nice to see something there, and oh, really good. cool, isn't it? Really neat. I wish that story was longer, because once you pick up a taco, you can't put it down, it just flops over. <laughs> or so. you just eat it with a fork. Right. So Helga's on. She is. She's going to make some really fun uh, Halloween treats and cool things for the kids. Right. A Tootsie Roll has never looked the same. Here's a kitchen witch. <laughs> <laughs> Helga, what are we making now? Well, we're going to do swamp monsters. Swamp monsters? Yeah, they don't sound edible. I know, but it's good. Really? No, that we can all eat everything. All right. And uh, we do macaroni and cheese, and I just cooked them up at home, the other macaroni, because, you know, we don't have that much time. So we want to put it all in here, have a whole bunch done here. And I wanted to just tell you, did you see that I look like a kitchen witch? Yeah, you flew in today. Yeah, right? look. I look just like my kitchen oh, witch up there. Oh, look at this now. Yes, isn't that nice? <laughs> in Germany, everybody has a kitchen witch. That's for good luck that everybody has food so to eat. So you're my good luck today. Yes, oh. I am. So let's do the, put them in the uh, Okay, buffet. do we need to spray these? Yeah, you want to spray them? I don't know how many we, I have in here, but I'll How many are we going to make? Eight. Eight. eight or ten, yeah. See how much we have here. Okay. Because it's the cheesiest, you know, what they say. You know, I almost want you to put one of those spoonfuls right in my mouth here. Uh, yeah, that is good and smell good. Okay, let's keep that up a little bit more. they got to be, like, even. Okay, okay. this one over here, maybe. Yeah. And pat, pat them down. And this is actually my daughter Charlotte's recipe. She always makes those things for the, you know, when you have little ones at home, you want to do exciting things for Halloween. Yeah. There you go. Hey, you can put them in the oven. Just right into the oven? Right into the oven. Okay, watch A little bit of olive oil? Yes. A couple of times around in the pan. That's good. And we're doing our spinach. And you know spinach has to taste good even if we're just using for our swamp monsters for the, the, you know, the swamp. 
That's the small. Well, yeah, I think you can do anything out of decoration, but you so, definitely want it to taste. Now good. this it says dribbled wash, so you have to believe it was at home. I do like to wash it though. Do so you know? trust them? I trust them. All yes. right. Wait, we have to. They charge extra for it. Yes. Oh, listen, listen to that. This one. And you know what? And we put salt and pepper on it. Okay. So you that's that? gonna melt down really fast. I think that's enough. There we go. Salt and pepper. And you know what? And we're using my. Oh, here I go again with my sister and Uh oh. Look what that is. Write this down at home. <laughs> you gotta have some nutmeg on when you work through some green vegetables. Always have nutmeg. It really does add a touch. Well, isn't that nice? I just love this. And nutmeg goes a long way. You know what? I should use this for to thin today because I like <laughs> it so much. <laughs> You know, I usually, if you hit your wand, I wouldn't have to walk anywhere for a plate. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I forgot about this. You I'm have those good. powers. Isn't you have to use them. Isn't that beautiful green color? It is. That, is that swampy enough, do you think? Well, I've seen some dirty swamps in my day, but yeah. that's we, nice and we pretty. Can, we always can put a little bit more nutmeg on it, you know. I can have smell a, that. That's beautiful. Isn't that good? Okay, let's put this on. And then we're going to go get our... Swamp monsters out of, this, okay. out of the oven. Okay, now we got them out of the oven. Watch okay. it, don't burn yourself. And we made a couple batches of these, so yes. we're going to start with these. Because everybody wants to eat afterwards. Got a big crew out there, yeah. you know. And look, at they come right out, and you set them right like this on your okay. swamp. Okay, okay. Okay, and if you want to go cut some of this, uh, the olives. It's like you've shown me here. Okay. Yeah, a couple of eyes. Now they stay on the inside, or how do you want to display yeah, them? Yeah, that stays like that. Okay. So you have bulging eyes. How's that? And yeah. hang on to your eyeballs. Okay, now, doesn't that look nice? Beautiful. Our swamp look monsters that. with the spinach. Way to go, Helga. Thank you. There you All go. right, now be careful, it might be hot. hot. Mm -hmm. Oh, dear. Mmm, mm, that's good macaroni, too. Good. I gotta get some of that spinach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's got that nutmeg. You probably taste the nutmeg, huh? Isn't that mm. good? That's perfect, and you have mm. to be careful not to overcook the spinach. That is just the way you want it. Yeah, you don't want to cook it too much, you know. Yeah, just wilt it. And you know what? I'm going to have one of those eyeballs. Mm. See, yeah, uh, I could get the nerve up for an eyeball, I suppose. Wonderful. Is that a nice my recipe? Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Mom and Mitch are out on a witch's brew break. So Mason Stein and Maddie Stein are here with me, and we're going to make a quick little craft for you. It's a real easy, inexpensive way to make a fun little treat. You just use um, pipe cleaners, and we have some googly eyes and Tootsie Pops. So, guys, I'm going to take your Tootsie Pops, take your pipe cleaners, and just line them all up, all together, and you're going to take your Tootsie Pop in the middle of your pipe cleaners, okay? And you're going to wrap them around. You just wrap them right around here. You got them all right. together there. This is a really cool treat to send to your kids' class if you're going to send in a Halloween treat for their um, for their classroom. It's inexpensive and it just takes no time at all. All you do, wrap it around. You've got it. Okay. You just wrap it around like that, and then you're going to form the legs. You put little creases for the legs wherever you want to have them. We have our little model here. And then you're going to bend the bottom of the foot just to make it look like a little spider leg. Just put a little crink in there. It doesn't have to be perfect. It could be however it comes out for you. You have to play with it a little bit. That's fine too. And then we're just going to um, glue on the little googly eyes. If you're having a Halloween party for maybe a birthday party, this is a real nice little party favor to put on the table. Mason, how are we coming along? It's almost sort of. You're almost I sort of there. Know. Well, I got to go. I got to put my eyes on yet too. Push it up a little bit toward the the, the body of the sucker because that's going to be the body of the spider. And we'll just put a couple dabs of glue on there. You got it. Yeah. All right. Put your little dab will do you there. And a little dab there. And there's your Google eyes. And you put them on there. 
and voila, you have your little spider favor treat, whatever you want it to be. You kind of have to spread it out a little bit to get it to stand straight, but you just work with it a little bit. And if you want to make it fancy, we have little beads and you can put the beads on for the joints to make it look a little bit on the more colorful side. But that's, that's just an extra option. It takes a little bit more time, but, um, but it's worth it in the end. And it's, uh, it's a nice little added touch. You just slide them on there at the bend of the leg. And we'll slide another one on there, if I can find the hole. <laughs> Having a little trouble there. Can you help me out there? Slide it up there. There you go. I know, we'll slide that back up. See, there you go. And then you have that right there at the bend of the leg. And there's your spider. And these would look really cute on any Halloween table. Oh, that was cute. I know. That was some cool, good stuff. Right? Cool stuff, yeah. <laughs> That's a Halloween pun. I didn't even mean it. So, anyways, good job, Helga. Thank you. All right, you ready to take a break? Let's take our break. Uh, we'll get Gabe and uh, Nate back here to talk about this the food. Sea bass. Look at how, how beautiful. beautiful it is. Yeah. It's one of your favorites. Mine, too. I know. And we'll find out why it's so delicious, too when we come back. So stick around. West of Maine, right here in downtown York and Warren. Bistro 1907 is a classic yet unique American bistro. This space lets us immerse ourselves in history. The dishes are inspired by our past, but have a modern twist. Bistro 1907 by Mark Canzanetta is unlike any place else. Find out why. I'm Mark Canzanetta and I welcome you to Bistro 1907. Christine Dental is accepting patients of all ages. We understand your needs during this difficult time. We'll be following public health mandates by offering one-on-one -on -one provider to patient care. Appointment times will be extended in order to sanitize before and after each session. And there's no need to wait inside our office. One of our staff members will welcome you into our building for your appointment as you wait safely in your vehicle. Protective gowns and eyewear will be provided. Your health and safety is our priority. Call and book your appointment at Pristine Dental today. All right, we are back. Uh, one more segment here with Valley Spotlight at West in Maine with the gentleman that put it all together. Say hey, Nate and Gabe. And Nate on the far side from me. And thank you again. I, I can't thank you enough. Oh, thank, thank you. you. For, yeah, it's been absolutely. so much fun. Yeah, but fun. I'm sure people at home are distracted by the dishes in front of us. So Especially tell me, Mike and I are like chomping at the bit to eat Tell me what this is and bass. the official name of it and all that good stuff. That's What's our pan on? roasted sea bass. Uh -huh. um, it sits over some grilled vegetable ravioli. We have uh, basil pesto in there. Then we make a quick salad of arugula um, with a little bit of lemon juice. And then we uh, accent it with crispy scout, uh, it's crisp, crisp, Crispy shallots, rather. Oh, crispy shallots. Oh, my goodness. Don't How worry. Do you know? A little crunch. I was going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just tear like, into it. Do you it cook like that a, medium? How do you cook a sea bass? Like a crazy person. Medium well. I mean, it, okay. Yeah, it rests. It's, it's not really a, a medium rare kind of fish. Okay. What's on the pork over there? That is also a basil pesto. Um, okay. It's nutless. It's, it has no pine nuts in it. Uh, that's our tomato compote. Uh, roasted cherry tomatoes and olive oil and fresh herbs. Mm -hmm. Those are our smoked Gouda popcorn grits from Ohio, uh, shag bark grits. Um, are they out of Cleveland? They're just outside of Athens. Sorry, out of Athens. Athens. Down south. Athens. Yep. All right, and then the drinks are, we have some. This one is quite remarkable, I have to say. Can and I just go straight to the beautiful one in the middle? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. <laughs> and work away, our way we across. We have a wonderful bar manager. Uh, Kim t put this together. This is our fall sangria. Uh, great red wine, lots of fall fruit, oranges. Uh, local apples, a little cinnamon stick, and then uh, he has gave us modern methods. Modern methods draft. So we yeah. have uh, eight taps here, and they are all from Ohio. And That's coming awesome. up on Halloween, Next you guys Saturday are going to do something super remarkably different with modern uh, methods. Yeah, a little bit different. So I have, have this little strange hobby to really love ramen noodles, authentic Japanese ramen noodles. Not the kind no. in the package, no, Michael. No, the crunchy kind, right. Okay, For goodness go sake, don't even go there. A few weeks ago we popped up, we teamed up with Modern Methods and we did it. We sold out in an hour and a half, so we're going to come back double the amount that we bring down there. And on Halloween night, from starting at 5 till I'm out again, we're going to do ramen noodle bowls again with them. So. Very good. Are you going to dress up? I might. What are you going with? I don't know. 
Maybe I have some ideas. The, the Belushi you got some samurai. Ideas? I do. I do. I have some uh, ideas. That, that crossed my That would be a good one. Belushi samurai. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Or the cheeseburger guy. Yeah, cheeseburger, cheeseburger, cheeseburger. cheeseburger. <laughs> or restaurant theme. You can get your hitter to go up a little higher. Big boy. Oh, yes, oh, I that vote for that good. one. Look a little like big boy, a little bit. Yeah, yeah there you go. You got now the suspenders. We'll yeah. do some checkers there. You'll be okay. Awesome. Yeah. You're halfway there. Full I'm, I'm all in. What are you that. gonna do? Now you no. gotta come up with something good. He's gonna laugh at me. That's you could be the hamburglar. That's not bad. See? I See, all you just do is like do like the the mask. I'd be Ronald. All right. That sounds good. Any other specials coming up in the next month or uh, over November? Things you're thinking of. You don't have to do it. You don't have to commit, but things you're thinking of here at uh, Western Maine. the experiences, we, we, we've cut, uh, last month we did our first Western Maine experience where we had an intimate night and we had uh, 14 people here. Uh -huh. We gather you around the kitchen and we did uh, an evening at a Manhattan Steakhouse. Where we nice. actually walked them through the meal. We cooked it with them, uh, showed everything that was raw and the finished product. So we're coming together with our next experience and uh, those tickets, we sell those online. So. so they're kind of educational. They're fun. Yeah. Uh, you know, we did 38 ounce porterhouses, shareable. Um, What's hope? You know, the, the classic size, That's the hope. cream spinach, you know, and uh -huh. the yeah, that potatoes. Wonderful. And then Kim made a drink and showed them how to demo uh, a Manhattan and a martini. Yeah. And so then, you know, just kind of hands around. on. Yeah, it was really so. Good, good nice. team you guys have here. I have to say, it's nice to see you guys successful. And of course, we wish the best for everything that's happening here in Thank downtown you. Warren. I think yeah. it's great how you guys are working together. If you Absolutely. want to see the uh, menu online, how can they do that? WestonMainWarren.com. Or, or find us on Facebook. Yeah, very easy. Well, Parking is not a problem here in downtown Warren. You could pull up on the street right across the street or take it around the corner and, and you're good to go. As always, thank you to all of our sponsors and everybody who supports Valley Spotlight. We literally could not do this without you. And um, Mike and I are just really grateful. Yeah, it's been a tough year for everybody, but we really appreciate everybody kind of sticking together and working things out, especially you guys. Thanks again. On and that, Ashley, I'd like to thank the Downtown 8 also. That's good. Yeah. You know, absolutely. it's been a great project, and you guys have been great and helped. You're welcome. So, so helpful. So. You're welcome. Yeah. We're proud to do it. <laughs> <laughs> they get to see a different fun. side of Lauren when I'm, like, you know, having to, like, who? Yeah, well, there's a lot to think <laughs> about when you do a TV going. show, isn't there? Yeah, sure, yeah. Yeah, just like you guys in the kitchen. It's your space, right? That's right. All right. If you want to catch up on Valley Spotlight, it's easy to do it. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, my goodness, or valleyspotlight.com is a great place to just look at everything that we've done over the past several years, Michael. So let's bring it yeah. in. Cheers to Western cheers to Maine guys. and cheers right. to 2020. How about that? Yeah. Like, nobody does that anymore. First. I know, right? <laughs> first for everything. And if you remember Weebles from way back when, mm -hmm. Ron loves this one. They had like, a haunted house. I know. They had a haunted house. So here's your retro commercial. Thanks again for watching. The Weebles Haunted House, Weebles wobble all about, and it's a real exciting place to be. A smiling ghost with glowing face has a secret hiding place, and that's not all, there's plenty more to see. Because a Weebles Haunted House is a great place to be. Weebles Haunted House, including glow-in-the-dark Weeble Ghost from Ramper Room. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.